on the last video. <laughs> and now we're here. What is the meaning of all of this? Bloody stake, misplaced silverware, inspector, what, was your investigation so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report? Lax. My investigation? Judge, I assure you that I am most thorough investigative officer on the fourth. Then it is amazing that the Parisian police managed to solve any crimes at all. <laughs> oh dear. Be on your way, Inspector. Perhaps do a little inspecting for your next case. Fine. So be it. Messieurs, until next time. Prosecutor, I trust your next witness is ready. Y yes, of course, Your Honor. I call upon him. Um, let's see. Monsieur. Monsieur Robicio Robinho, the uh, photographer who attended the banquet on the night of the mur. Uh oh. Okay. Let's hope that this takes place in the same universe as uh, Ace Attorney. Wherein evidence acquired through such questionable means is still able to be used. Oh boy. How does it go? I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's a little cliché to be perfectly honest. Could the witness please introduce himself for the court record? As if anyone in this courtroom does not immediately recognize me. I am the great Monsieur Robicio Robinho, cutting-edge photographer and visionary. I don't just take people's pictures, I capture their very essence. Je suis l'artiste. Tu es une pipe. You may have seen my works in hip magazines, La Branche, or Cies Chouette. Whatever that says. I could send you tweets if you like. Y what did you just say? What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon, it's the 19th century, get with the times. Yes, yes, your works are very impressive, Monsieur Robinho. But uh, let's, let's get down to business. Could you tell us your uh, activities, what, what they were on the night of the murder? Very well. I was hired by Baron Wargill to capture the evening's events. I arrived at 7.30, I pointed my camera and captured the beauty of the banquet in one fantastic- <laughs> Oh god, photograph. <laughs> ah, this is a professional playthrough right here. Burp. Then I billed Baron Wargill and I left. Like a true artist. And, uh, with regards to the photograph itself, who did you photograph? I thought you might ask. I brought a copy so that you could all see for yourselves. What? Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. Hey! Hey, wait a minute. That's not right. My word, this is an ex- I mean, my word, this is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So let's see who do we have here. In the middle, we have Baron Rourke, the lion who hosted the event. On the left, we see Signor Pertois de Miao and the father of the defendant, Dame Catalina. And finally, we see the, uh, the housemaid, Colleen Duhout, who I suspect may have snuck into the picture uninvited. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The victim and um, Dame Catalina de Miao. It's quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Monsieur Raddington. This proves nothing. So the defendant and the victim were not photographed with the others. Doesn't mean that they were in the garden together at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. The prosecution may continue. Behind the photograph subjects... Where... Oh! Oh, there are hands on the clock in that photo. Behind the photograph subjects, we all see a wall clock with the time at, uh, 7.30. Now, why is that time significant? Well, as Invector Valerti told us earlier, that's when the crime took place. Every suspect has an alibi in the time of the murder, save for Dan Catalina herself. Hey, Falcon, that photograph doesn't seem right. He looks different to the one we borrowed from Robinho's studio.
Now I see it too. Our photograph shows Colleen Duhout, Dame Caterina, and Signor Pretois. But Monsieur Robinio's photograph shows Baron Rorgil, where Dame Caterina should be standing. If we assume that only one photograph was taken, then this demonstrates that one of the photo photographs must have been edited in some way. You should just slam that evidence down and be like, BAM! Inconsistency! The whole courtroom is out of order! Case closed! I can't do that. Well, I suppose you could be a little more delicate with your words. No, I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was illegally obtained. If I were to present it, Monsieur Robinio would ask how we acquired it, then the whole trial would derail. God damn it. In a worst case scenario, I could lose my legal license, and we will, could be arrested for theft. Oh. Well, we don't want that. No. No, we don't. I should tread lightly. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well, the defense may proceed. Huh, it's a waste of time if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. Righto. 7 p.m. Camera. Photograph. Build. Tell me about the photograph. Let's take a closer look at this photograph. I do see... Yep, there's a mistake. Just to clarify, Monsieur Robinho, photographs are a different, or a direct reflection of reality, are they not? That is correct. The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. Huh. That is most curious, because I see a mistake. Mistake impossible! I just told you! Monsieur, the camera is a perfect, unbiased device. The photographs it produces are flawless. Falcon, I'm not seeing any mistakes. Perhaps you can be more specific? Certainly. It's right there. The clock in this photograph, there's something not right about it. Oh, well, isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with the key piece of evidence that implicates his client. Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Rabington. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture. Shit don't have hands. Yeah. It has no hands? The clock is merely a decorative piece. A talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Wargill of his housemaid, or his housemaid, if you have any doubts. Monsieur Robinio, how do you explain this discrepancy? Uh, I don't know. There must be some sort of mistake. My camera is flawless. There is no mistake, Monsieur. Your photograph depicts something that does not exist in the real world. Maybe there was an error in the printing process. An error precisely where the clock hand should be? Please, Monsieur, don't patronize us. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, Monsieur Robinho, edited this photograph. Edited? I'm no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put hands on the clock. It would have been a simple task considering the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a handless clock in the photograph just to simply... to simplify the editing process. Oof. Ugh. I... Falcon, your reasoning is absurd! Why would the witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? By showing the photograph to have taken place at precisely 7.30, it clears all the photograph subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur Robinio created a perfect alibi. Of course, this raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting, and why? Was Monsieur Robinio coerced, bribed, threatened? Enough silence, let's hear some answers, Monsieur Robinho. Fine, you gompy, I'm guilty, I did it all! You did it? You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Grenway. 
What? 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 No, 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 no. I, I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. I was ordered to make changes to the printed photographs. Yes, that includes adding, adding hands to the clock. You were ordered. By whom? I dare not say. Robinio, I strongly advise you to answer the defense's question. You have pledged to speak without fear, after all. With respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I feared the punishment of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws? Did you hear that, Falcon? That is most unfortunate. Robinio, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We don't live under the ancient regime, after all. But since you admit it to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave, you shall be charged with perjury in due course. I cannot protest. That's the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. Good day, messieurs. Nice. So, uh, the clock's hands were painted on. So what? Doesn't matter. The photograph still depicts Dame Catalina is absent close to the mine of the time of the murder. That's significant. Don't be dense, Raddington. If the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a portrayal of the, uh, night's events. Because, if we accept that one part of the picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that other parts were too. It is possible that Dame Catalina was painted out. Otherwise, even worse, it's possible that another person was painted in. We know that the witness was trying to cover for someone, so all possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That the housemaid paid off the photographer? Was it Senor Pertois de Miao himself, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks a means or a motive. And it wouldn't make sense for Signora Patois to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron Rorgil deliberately tried to frame Dame Catalina? That's exactly what I'm suggesting. Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. The Baron is a pillar of our community. He would never do such a thing. Raddington. I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. However... Perhaps I should offer my opinion. Baron! It's not on time for your witness testimony yet! So, you would think, Prosecutor, and yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. D -d 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 incompetence Indeed. Let us proceed with witness questioning. Is that fine with you, Judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good, and I trust that the defense has no objections. As a matter of fact, tread carefully, Falcon. Or should I call you Inspector V.V. Kestrel? I hear that impersonating a police officer is a major criminal of- uh oh It would be a shame if word were to spread. N no objections here. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc., etc. Now, Prosecutor, ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Baron Rorgill, um, on the night of the, th um, the initial dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grenway left to visit the garden. Dame Catalina followed behind him moments later. Signor Pertois, Monsieur Robinio, and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. After the photographer left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grinway and Dame Catalina. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Do you doubt my integrity, Garçon? I'm just here to uncover the truth, Baron. Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot. Let us establish with absolute certainty that I, Baron Rorgil, am an honest man. The defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Alright, so this, this lion clearly has, you know, murdered one of his partners for some 
I don't know, he's greedy, he wants money, he's, you know, you know how it is. So the dinner happened, photographer arrived, Grenway left to visit the garden, Cowderly and I followed, housemaid discovered her, uh, I don't know. Let's have a look at our evidence. Cigar. Oh, the cigar. I wonder. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something with that cigar, it seems. But what? Alright then. Tell me about the garden. When was the last time you visited? <clears throat> As it happens, I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Okay. Years, you say? Indeed. That's not right. Baron, I do not wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Ho? Oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you have visited the garden recently. Balderdash, my word is gold! Show the court this so-called hard evidence that I've had in my garden. It's right there, it's, it's the cigar. This was found in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the uh, fountain basin. Right beside where the murder occurred. Oh, uh, cigar butt? That, um, that could belong to anyone. Anybody and... Prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. <laughs> oh, I'm getting sick. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Sorry, Baron. That is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars, but I must apologize, Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. Oh, you're good. You're good, Rorgale. What have what you got, Ruby? What bullshit do you have? You see, prior to the banquet, I hadn't visited my own garden in years. But naturally, after hearing the housemaid's cry for help on the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. Oh, you. I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw. That must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar in the fountain basin. You can't... You would have had to physically throw that thing up there, you know. I would find that believable, believable if the cigar were just casually discarded. But as it happened, the cigar butt, as I said, was found in the fountain's upper basin. A location that could only be accessed with great inconvenience. And a little paddling. The cigar butt was not dropped, it was deliberately hidden. There are a number of explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one. That is that you, Baron Rorgill, deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I now? And what illicit activities would be those be? You want me to spell it out? Fine. Let's put everything on the table. You, Baron Rorgill, murdered Monsieur Grenway. That is what you were trying to keep hidden. Directly accusing me of murder. How shamelessly brazen. That is a ludicrous accusation, Falcon! The Baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order! Your allegation is baseless! You have no evidence! No means, motives, or opportunity! No evidence! Think harder, Monsieur Rabington. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Wargill as the prime suspect. You want the means? Baron certainly had the means. His lion's claws are as sharp as a surgeon's blade. Gutting a frog belly would be trivial to him. Even Monsieur Robinio confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. Ridiculous, I would never threaten a man with violence. You want motive? The Baron had been at least 10,000... The Baron... I'm falling apart here. I'm falling apart during the hype of it all. The Baron had at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. 
By removing a business, business partner, the Baron's share of his railway company increased from one-third to one-half. This is preposterous. And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. Then he hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself. Photo photographing the guests in front of a handless clock to make easy for editing is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said. Prosecutor, are you just going to let this slanderous yarn go uncontested? Say something! Object! I... Um... Oh, you're pitifully useless. After executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory evidence, his finished cigar. He knew that leaving it at the crime scene would have raised suspicion, but he didn't have time to properly dispose of it. So, out of desperation, he threw it into his fountain, out of the sight of his guests and any snooping policemen. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Senor Pertois de Miao, since that would ensure total control over his railway company. Whaleway. Alas, the Dame Catalina was the first to happen upon the crime scene, so the Baron had to improvise. This is an outrage! Judge, I demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic. No, there is only one outrage here. That is, that a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl from murder. You're a bourgeois of the worst kind. How dare you, Garçon! The utter nerve for lying, scumbag of a lawyer, to accuse a philanthropist like myself of something so heinous. It's nothing like the fat cat bourgeois. I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. No, you're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to reap a few francs. You incredulous whelp. I oughta gut you right here and now like... Like! Like a damned frog! Could... Could someone please restrain the Baron? I'm on it, Yanner. Let's go, old man. The conciergerie with you. Man, I am just omitting some words from my sentences. Nah, eh, it's early in the morning. It's fine. Don't touch me, you filthy jackdaw. I can walk myself. Well, this is quite a turn of events. Does the prosecution have anything to add? Oh... Well, in a matter of speaking, um... Oh, well, um, to be honest, um... No. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals of the court please be patient in this time. Falcon, that was incredible. Thank you. I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Caterina's innocence. We'll get a not guilty verdict for sure. Huh. Sparrowson, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Dame Catrilene's innocence. All I have done is demonstrate that there is a significant possibility that she is not guilty. I'm not sure that I understand the difference. I'm pretty sure all he's saying is that it's the jury's job. We have reached a decision. In light of recent revelations, it is clear that an error of judgment was made in the initial arrest. On that note, we are unanimously find the defendant, Game Caterline de Miao, to be not guilty. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Cause it's cats. Monsieur Falcon. Petty Sparrowson, you did it! I don't even remember what voice I was using for her. Oh well. Yeah, I suppose we did, didn't we? 
We should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. Case closed. Oh, you did it, Falcon. I can't take all the credit. This was a group achievement. I'm so proud of both of you. Yep, that's the one I was doing. I'll go get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses. Least dirty. You are amazing, Falcon. Ah, it was nothing. I very much like the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. Sparrows and I just worked at uh, unveiling the truth given the facts of the case. Falcon, there is no need to play coy. The case is over. Play coy? Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, I'll spell it out for you. What the fuck is going on? I murdered Monsieur Grinway. I saw him in the garden, all drunk and vulnerable, and seized my opportunity. It was nothing personal, just business, you understand. Oh... You know, that's a heel turn that you say for the finale of a game, but you, you just opened up in the tutorial case with it, huh? To increase my papa's share of the train company, of course. My papa always said that the drunk old frog was the weakest link. Your confession doesn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Rorgil's cigar butt hidden in the garden. Well, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the brains of Paris's finest. But Falcon proved that Monsieur Robinio's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy paying a visit to Monsieur Grenway in the garden. My papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Robinio to paint me over Baron Rorgil and to add his hands to the clock. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish altering either photograph by trial day. It's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative, because that could have gone very badly. Oh god, the only reason she's telling me all this is because the justice system is broken and you can't be tried for the same crime twice. Ugh. Okay. What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There aren't many lawyers in the whole of France who would could have won a case like this. Even for a bourgeois kitty like me. I think you should leave. Huh. Fine. So much for celebrations. Here's the payment for your services. Straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, Patti Sparrison. Forty francs. Falcon, what do we do now? Falcon. Wow. All right. That was that was a that was a case, all right. This escalated in such a way that I did not expect. This game is promising. It's pretty promising. Gonna play more. Huh. I have to wonder if this is the kind of thing I could keep up for a whole LP. I'll see. I'll see. Huh. Yeah. I'm not gonna continue into the next case right away. Maybe I'll do some more of this. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But for now, I'll see you guys later.